mini amp time again, the Ayama A07, which has the TPA3255 amplifier chip, rated at 300 watts by two. Right, let's find out. These mini home amplifiers on Amazon have proven to be very popular videos. Check the link in the video description to see all the ones I've done. Today we're looking at the A07 by Ayama. At the time this video it was about $80. So we picked up one of these. Let's take a look and find out what's in the box. Always fun time to open up a box to find out what's inside. First off, you can see the owner's manual, which goes through all the settings, adjustments, features, specifications, things like that. You can see the AC adapter. This one is a 32 volt five amp adapter. And then here you can see the amplifier, the A07 by Ayama. And we talked about the uh, adapter that came with it. These are also available without an adapter, but when you buy it on Amazon for around 80 bucks, it does come with this particular adapter I'm showing here, 32 volt five amp, which is 160 watts. So that's gonna be nowhere near the output of the amplifier's capability. But on the front here, very simple, power switch and a volume knob. And the volume knob is very nice, very smooth operation. Smooth operator like Sade. On the back, we have just a few things. The auxiliary that is isn't line level output. Then we have RCA right and left inputs. Then we have these binding posts for the speaker outputs. This is a stereo amplifier. Also the DC input jack, that's for plugging in the power supply. As far as dimensions go, for the width is four inches or 100 millimeters. For the height, 1.6 inches or 40 millimeters. The depth, 7.2 inches, and that does include the volume knob on the front as well as the binding post on the back. As far as ratings go with the included adapter, 65 watts per channel at eight ohms, 78 watts per channel at four ohms. On the IAMA website, they list several different versions of power supplies you can use with this up to a 48 volt 7.5 amp. But when I looked on Amazon, the biggest one I could find by Ayama was the 48 volt 5.2 amp, which is a 250 watt power supply. So this came in a separate box in the amplifier. Very big, very beefy power supply. This thing was $75. It did have a discount as well. Still very expensive, around 60 bucks. You can see the size of it compared to the amplifier itself and also the other adapter. Now the spec sheet provided, interestingly enough, doesn't have the 5.2 amp model. It only has the 48 volt 7.5 amp model where it shows 120 watts at eight ohms, 150 watts at four ohms. In order to find the true power output of this amplifier, we're gonna use the amp dyno by SMD and Des Moines Engineering. On the left side, you'll see the RMS power output in watts. In the middle, you'll see the ohm load. On the right, there'll be a voltage that is for the dyno only, so you can ignore that for these particular tests. In each test, the amp dyno has three different modes, certified, uncertified, and dynamic, and really it just tells the difference between the distortion. Certified is up to 1% distortion. Uncertified is up to the clipping point. Dynamic shows how much dynamic power the amp has. This here's my favorite part. First round of tests will be eight ohms using the 32 volt adapter, rated 65 watts per channel. Let's do the certified test first, so 1% distortion. Find out if we can get that 65, and no, we're a little bit shy. 53 watts per channel at 8 ohms with a 32 volt 5 amp adapter. Let's try the uncertified test, which takes us up to clipping. And these mini amps, typically once they hit distortion, go into clipping, as you can see here, pretty much exactly the same results, about 53 watts per channel. A little bit over 100 watts total with the included adapter. Dynamic power sends a pulse tone into the amplifier. If you'd like to see more about the amp dyno test, check a link in the video description. It talks about all the different settings and how they work, around 53 watts per channel. Let's try four ohm stereo. It's rated 78 watts per channel using the 32 volt adapter. Certified test first, up to 1% distortion. And yes, we got that plus some 95 and 92 watts, very nice. Now let's try the uncertified test up to the clipping point of the amplifier. And you're gonna see about the same numbers, exactly the same, 95 and 92 up to clipping. What about the dynamic burst? Do we get any more power using the dynamic power? Actually get a little bit less. Nope, it's climbing up, counting up. 
95 and 93 watts. Now let's try adding this additional power supply here, which costs almost as much as the amp itself. This is a 48 volt 5.2 amp or around a 250 watt power supply. The 8 ohms is rated 120 watts by two using a bigger power supply than that, but we're going with what we have here. Certified test first and 1% distortion. And check this out. We got 120 watts per channel right at it. Very impressive from a mini amp. Let's try uncertified up to the clipping point, 8 ohms, 48 volt adapter. Can we get more? They're right about the same, 120 and 117. What about dynamically? Using the one kilohertz tone here. Look at these numbers across the board, like exact, 120 and 117. All right, so we've seen the 8 ohm test. Let's try 4 ohms, 150 watts by 2. That's over three, that's 300 watts. This is only a 250 watt adapter, but we're going to talk about that in a minute. Certified test first to 1% distortion. Yo, 170 and 163. Holy moly. That's actually more power than the power supply. I know you guys are going to ask, how is this possible? I'll tell you in just a second. Uncertified up to clipping. Look at this. 194 and 184. Color me impressed. Dynamic. Look at this, even more. <laughs> right at 200 watts per channel. 400 watts out of a 250 watt adapter. How is that possible? I'm gonna show the results here and talk about that. If you guys don't know, I've shown tests before with these power supplies. They put out more than they're rated. So these tests are done very short periods of time. So constantly you're not gonna be able to get 250 watts, but for short bursts, you're gonna be able to get quite a bit more. Let's try the amp out with the ELAC bookshelf speakers, see what kind of sound quality we can get out of these. All right, we have the Ayama amplifier hooked up to the ELAC bookshelf speakers. Let's try a little Smoke Jacket Blues. Try a song with a little bit more bass. This is called Back Rub from the YouTube Audio Library. All right, another demo. I always get asked to play some rock music. How about this? enough jam and hope you guys were actually using headphones or good speakers for that segment otherwise you didn't get the full effect let's find out what's inside we'll take off the four screws here on the front also pull off the volume knob and then we'll have to switch around to the back and there's four more additional screws we have to take out then we can separate the top and the bottom of the amplifier you can see the different components there and the big fat heat sink in the middle which is what covers up the tpa 3255 chip we'll get to that here in just a minute here you can see the 50 volt 2200 microfarad 85 degrees Celsius capacitors, as well as some of the other components in there. And let's slide out the amplifier here from the enclosure so we can get to the bottom of that heat sink and we can take out the uh, additional screws. There's two screws on the bottom that hold that heat sink on top of the TPA chip. Took those two screws out. There's the heat sink and there is that tiny amplifier module. Look how small that thing is. That is what drives this amplifier, which is really incredible. The TPA 3255 is by Texas Instruments. 315 watts per channel, it says at 4 ohms. That's with giving it enough power supply, which we didn't have quite that much. Let's talk about the pros and cons now, the things I like, things I think could be better. Obviously, big power. 
The sound quality was great. I didn't have any issue with it. Line level output also has a big volume knob and binding post. Now, one thing to note, the line level output is not variable, so you can't hook it up to like a subwoofer. You hook it up to another amplifier, that's fine. Things that could be better, the amp and the volume is all you get. There's no remote, no Bluetooth, no phono preamp, no headphone jack, and it needs an expensive power supply. I mean, literally the power supply costs as much or more than the amplifier itself to give you the true output. Again, if you double the power, you're getting about 3 dB more output. So it is a, enough that you can actually hear the difference, but not a huge amount. So there's my review, the Ayama A07, tested with two different power supplies. If you want to see additional tests, make sure you stick around to the very end because I always hide stuff at the very end of the video. Thanks for supporting. Make sure you smash me a thumbs up. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. Have the Ayama A07 here. I've got RCAs going in and I've got the 1 8 inch jack going out. And what I'm gonna do is show you that this volume has nothing to do with the output level. So this is a line level output. So this is no good for a subwoofer, unfortunately. Now you know we couldn't go by without trying the 2.67 ohm stereo test at 48 volts. That's right, let's see what we get here. Certified test first to 1% distortion. Yo, 184 watts per channel with a 250 watt power supply. Yes, for a short burst, it can put out quite a bit more than the power supply is rated. Makes you wonder what if you used a real true 480 watt power supply, how much power it put out. I don't know, Ayama, if you got one, send me one. Uncertified, look at this, 288 and 271, almost at 300 watts per channel. Dynamically, here you go, 269 and 269, one kilohertz burst tone. Let's get back to testing some more amps. Big D, I'm out. You know how them sound waves go? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Through the system, I don't wanna be a slave. I've been doing shit my way, uh, or the highway, and in the driveway.